Guys, there is so much stuff I need to get off my chest in this, this video. You Tiger fans are driving me to the point where I want to stick a knife through my face. I'm really, really going to try to keep my cool. Okay. Facebook, for some reason, I'm a part of a couple Tigers pages. I really enjoy talking baseball with people on those pages. A couple people in particular, not all of them, just a couple. But the group is pretty big. It has about 5,000 people in it, but only really 30 or 40 people post consistently, like, my, like myself. But some of the stuff I read on there... And then stuff of the, some of the stuff I read, like, on Tiger's articles. And then some of the stuff I read in the, on, on comments, on like, on, like, sports websites pages, just absolutely blow my fucking mind. Let's go through all this. Let's go. Let's talk about Leland and Lloyd McClendon. Every single time there's been a loss this season, it's every single game there's been a loss, it's always been on Jim Leland's head. Every single time. I'm not that big of a Leland fan. I think he can't manage a bullpen for shit. And I've never really been too high on his horse. But every single time the last three years the Tigers have been bad in the second half. Or the first half. And they come back in the second half. There's no problem then. Everyone's on top of Leland's nuts. When he got in the playoff last year, that's all you heard is how great of a manager Jim Leland is. How great of a job he does. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Now all I keep hearing about how is the team underachieving. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. blah with some more. Here's what is pissing me off. Dave Dombrowski has yet to fix any of the flaws that are on this team. He typically does not make any kind of trades until the couple of weeks until July ends. Just one week ago, one fucking week ago, we were 10 games over 500 and 5 up on the Indians. That's with a team that has the second worst offense in baseball after the 7th inning or later. They hit 226 as a team. Seventh inning or later, the Tigers do. And then, the bullpen's been as bad as it has, and they were just ten games over 500 and five up on the Indians. With this team, that's not even close. Close to being fully assembled to what it's going to look like at the end of the year. If you could do that with that squad, what are you bitching for now? Tiger fans just do not realize this, and I'm sick and tired of reading about it and hearing about it. Every single loss with all these doomsday things. I've read trade Johnny Peralta, trade Benoit, this team is over, season's over, they're going nowhere fast, because they've lost three straight games, and the Indians have leapfrogged us for first. Just a month ago, a month and a half ago, the Indians went 18 for 22. And what happened? The Tigers got hot. They swept the Indians at Comerica Park, and then, what, like I said, they were 10 games up and 5 over the Indians. The Indians got to play the White Sox, one of the worst teams, the worst team in the Central, and one of the worst teams in the AL this year. That's why they, they got where they are. They have not had to play anyone in quality in the last few weeks, and that's why they won four straight, and that's why the Tigers have lost it. The bullpen has not been fixed. The Tigers' offense in the seventh thing or later has been trash. That's why they are where they are. But for people to sit here and keep acting like after every single fucking loss that the season is over, we are 82 games in. Like I said, none of this stuff has been fixed. It's not like we just traded away Castellanos for Jonathan Papelbon and Papelbon's blown save after save and another bullpen arm we got is just can't get it out and so we just wasted our thing and it's September, we just lost it. It's not like it's September 28th and the Indians just jumped us on the last day of the season like the Twins did. To force that game on 63 in 2009 to knock us out of the playoffs. No. No, no, no. No. It is the 82nd game. Now here's why you people need to calm the fuck down. In 2011, the year they won 95 games. 82 games in, they were 48 and 33. Almost an identical record to what they got now. Last year, 82 games in, they were 40 and 42. Now you ask, well, what's differently? You know what they done? You know what Dave Muskie's done? 2011 got Doug Fister to help support Justin Verlander. Look what happened. They ended up winning 12 straight in late August and early September. They won the division by 11 over 10 games. Last year, what did they do last year? Uh, Dave Dombrowski traded for Omar Fonte and Anibal Sanchez. Look what happened. Sure, the Tigers were, didn't lead the division until late September, but they sure made a count, and Infante and Sanchez sure played a huge role in the last few games of the year, to, or the last couple months of the year, to help them get to that point. 
My point being is, is I'm sick and tired of people always saying, fire Leland, fire McLennan, season's over, after every single loss because of who's on this team. People act like because you got Verlander, you got Port, you, know, you got uh, Miguel Cabrera, you got Prince, you got Vimar, Peralta's having a good year, whatever, blah, 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 you're not allowed to lose a game. These teams go through this kind of slumps. The Angels have had a number all year, and you know you only play 500 at best on the road. You knew we were about to hit a rough stretch of the fucking thing. My point being is, is you were just 10 games up and 5 over the Indians with the squad that's not even close to being complete yet, yet people still find the need to panic when the Tigers, like I said, just had a huge lead with a team that's not even really performing that well. That well at all. Not, I mean, I don't even get how to explain it anymore. You just were up 5 games with a team that's not even playing that well at all and you made a bit of a rough match. Watch them what they do after the All-Star break. Watch what the Tigers do. My point being is, is watch after the game. If you can do that with a crappier squad that has major bullpen issues and the offense is not doing that well, watch what happens after you get a bullpen arm. Watch what happens if you get a couple arms. What needs to happen now, too, about the seventh year later? They're either going to have to bump V-Mart down or do something about that because V-Mart has been an absolute fucking rally killer. They were relying too much on Jackson, Hunter, Fielder, and Cabrera. And if those two guys don't do anything, or those five guys don't do anything, the seventh thing or later, v, uh, Prince Fielder will get on. Eighth inning, you're down a run. Prince Fielder gets on, V-Mart hits into a double play. Johnny Peralta get on. Try to start another rally. Andy Dirks flies out. they got to do something about it. There are two biggest issues that need to get fixed. Is V-Mart either needs to start hitting, or you bump him down in the order. And you need to call up Nick Castellanos because he's hitting over three. He's hitting three hundred one in the minors. He's got an OBP of almost three eighty. He's slugging almost five hundred. His OPS is almost uh, eight seventy. He's got eleven homers, forty two RBIs. He's got twenty six doubles. There's nothing left for him to prove down there. Dirks is not hitting. He's not an everyday outfielder at all. He wasn't last year. I said that last year, and I said at the start of this year, you give Dirks every day at bats and he's going to suck. And he has done nothing but suck. And Alex Avila has no choice to be get back, called back up, because he didn't get called back up today, because the pitching staff pitches like shit when he's gone, because Brian Holiday and Brian Pena are clueless how to call a game back there. You should see the team's ERA since Avila's been gone. And that's the only reason why Avila's back. But my point being is, Tiger fans, stop freaking out and calling for people's heads after every single loss. There was idiots I was dealing with after the third fucking game of the season when the Twins took 2-3 and saying the Tigers were fucked this season. I'm just getting sick of reading all the Doomsday posts and all the asinine fucking comments. You got these people that have watched 10 games since Game 4 of the World Series last year and act like they know what the fuck they're talking about, but they don't have a single goddamn clue what's going on because they've only watched 10 games this year and they don't even watch the team consistently and they act like they're fucking Buster Only or Tim Kirchner or Peter Gammons and they're clueless. They're dumb shits. They have no idea how the season works. You're going to go through highs and lows in the season. You're going to go through losing streaks and shit's going to happen. If this was September... And and we had made our trades, and then I would be fucking infuriated right now. I would be pissed off if it was that point in time. But the time being, it's fucking July 1st. You just were 10 games over 500 with a squad that's not even nearly complete, and you were owning the division, you had a five-game lead. Just imagine after you get your pieces in place that you need, the division will not even be close. Not even close. But for the time being, stop acting like firing Lloyd McClendon is going to get this team. All of a sudden, they're going to start hitting this everything or later. People act like you, you fire. You're going to bring me in as a hitting coach. I'm going to go, hey, Andy Dirks, start hitting. And that's what people think hitting coaches do. And it's pathetic that you got all these morons. I mean, I honestly think I'm arguing with people who have never watched a fucking game a day in their lives. I truly think that. So the race series, Max Scherzer pitches a good game, game one. Prince Fielder has a really clutch home run that probably would have went 500 feet if it wasn't for a catwalk, a catwalk being there. Game two, they lose because everyone's saying Jim Leland should have left Drew Smiley in there. You know, oh yeah, let's leave Drew Smiley in there, their eighth inning guy. Because you know what that's going to do. Let him pitch two innings. That way, in case they got to lead game three in the eighth inning, let's put Bruce Rendon or Phil Coke out there, Darren Downs. Yeah, that'll work out. Let's spend our guy in, the, in two innings in the game before when your team hits 226 and seventh inning or later and they've only won two games all year and extra innings. So let's spend our, our best bullpen arm then when you're probably going to lose that game, even though Verlander didn't have that bad of an outing. But let's spend him then and say, fuck tomorrow. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just sort it out tomorrow. And then they lose game three. 
because they can't score with the bases loaded and no one out. Oh no, that was today's game. I'm getting shit mixed up. But uh, they still squandered plenty of opportunities this series. Right now, the Tigers aren't hitting runners in scoring position very well, and they're not tacking on runs. If you honestly had a bullpen right now, that was good. And the Tigers could hit seventh inning or later. They they have fifty wins. They have fifty wins, no doubt about it. Fifty wins, but they're not. They they don't add tack on runs. If they did add tack on runs, then we wouldn't need a bullpen because they they'd score. But they hit two twenty six after the seventh inning or later. They just suck ass in this thing. But my it, just like it brings me back to my point. And then today they get they get annihilated again by the Blue Jays because Luke Piconen comes in after Pedro Alvarez or not Pedro Alvarez but. Uh, Alvarez, why do I keep fucking calling him? Jose Alvarez has an awful start. But Jose Alvarez has an awful start. And Luke Piconi comes in, gives a three-run homer after the Tigers score two to make it a 4-2 game. And they lose. Blah, blah, blah. Blue Jays series over with. Um, I don't know who pitches tomorrow or the day after. Personally, I don't give a fuck. This video is not really a preview. It's personally, it's ugh. Scherzer pitches tomorrow. Or no. Fisher pitches tomorrow against Chin Ming Wong. And then Scherzer pitches against Johnson and then Verlander ends the series. Point being is, guys, stop panicking, please, and stop acting like firing Jim Leland and Lloyd McClendon is going to turn this team around and going to make him start hitting. If it was September and we had already made all our trades and our bullpen, you know, we had traded with Castellanos for these guys that were supposed to do to help our team come around, then you can panic. Then you can panic we just lost the lead in September. But it's not. It's July. It's not even the All-Star break yet. Chill the fuck out. I'm literally going to fucking have a heart attack reading some of this shit because I get so pissed off from the ignorance I see. I mean, what the fuck, guys? So anyways, like I said, Tigers the last two years have been awful in the first half of the game, the first half of the season. They play really good in the second half the last two years. Why, I don't know. That's typically not Leland. Since 06, they've usually been shit in the second half, except the last two years. They've been the opposite. Once they make their trades, once they get the bullpen sorted out, they need to bring up Castellanos, get Dirks out of there because he's killing the bottom of the lineup, and do some with V-Mart if you don't start hitting. Watch the way the team goes. Said, just 10 games over 500 and a five-game lead with a squad that's not even nearly close to what it's going to look like at the end of the year, I guarantee it. So I got for you guys today. Go time.